let's take a look at practice practicum one. So we're going to start, there'll be three problems again, and they'll build upon each other. Uh, let's see what our first problem is. It's called table count, and it says we are the owner of a restaurant. We have tables that sit two, four, six, or eight people, and we plan to keep track of how many of each type of table was used in the course of one night. So people come in in groups of size one to eight. A table can't hold more than the maximum. So if I have a table of size two, it can fit one or two people. It cannot fit three. Uh, so it says, so a party of three size three would need to be seated at a table that holds four. We can assume that we have enough tables of each type. Our input is going to be an integer n, denoting the total number of parties, followed by that many integers, uh, each in the range of one to eight. So our program is meant to keep track of the number of each type of table that was used. And then at the end, we're gonna output um, a list of the four table sizes, so table size two, four, six, and eight, followed by a colon, a space, and the number of times that a, um, that size table was used. So if we look at our example input output, we see we read in a six that tells us how many parties are going to come to our restaurant that evening. We get a three that's going to go to a table of size four. Five is going to go to a table of size six. Another three is going to a table of size four, etc. And so in the end, we would have had two parties seated at a table of size two, that's the one and the two. Um, three parties seated at a table of size four, that would be the three, three, and four. And one um, party, the party of size five, goes to the table um, of size six. And we didn't have anybody, uh, any party larger than a six, and so we didn't need the table of size eight. So we see that we have an algorithm for this problem, but I think we'll start off, um, uh, we can use it if we wish, um, uh, but, uh, but we'll start off and just think about what we need. Okay, so the first thing we have is our integer. Um, we're reading in the um, n, the number of parties. And, um, and the way that we would do that is, first of all, to make use of a scanner. So we have imported the utilities library already, which is great, but um, we're going to need to um, then create a scanner. So that equals new uh, scanner system.in and semicolon and we're going to read into an integer in that next int that um, that next integer and we see we've been given an algorithm and and I can we can show you what it is um, but um, but essentially it is what I would follow at any rate I and mean, I'll explain some of the details a bit more differently than what the algorithm is. I'll do it the way that I would have done it, and it really does follow very closely. So I'll leave that open in case you are curious about what that that would be. Um, oh, sorry. So so then we need a place to store the the tables. Um, so we we can choose. We've got a table size two, four, six, and eight, and the algorithm specifically says store that. So you might be tempted to say. Um, you know, a two-seater uh, table or something like that. But the reason I wanted to show you the algorithm is it, it says um, that, no, you should be using it in an array, and I, it is the easiest way to do this at any rate. Um, but the reason it's worth, if you're given an algorithm for a practicum, for instance, you want to look at that because it may be that when we extend it for problem two, we require this sort of starting vantage point. So, um, so it says, to create an array of size four to hold, that's going to hold the table information. And so uh, we will do that. And, and I think there's justification for doing that at any rate in terms of the next step, which is now we're gonna read in that information where you have to decide where are we putting that. And so the way that we can do that then is loop through, we wanna loop through all of that input. So we've gotta go through the three, five, three, one, two, four, and we know that the first thing we read in that n tells us how many times we're gonna go through that loop. And so we wanna create a loop 
int i equals zero to i less than n. So I want to go through that loop n times. And, um, and each time we go through that, I want to read in um, the next group. So what we're reading in is actually that the group size that's arriving. And it is an integer coming in. So we can go ahead and read in the next int. And then uh, what you'll see in the algorithm is, is a way to decide where we're going to hold that. So I'll step through like where that would come from. But essentially, so now we've got this group size. And what we need to do is decide, OK, if I have a group size 3, where am I putting that in my table? right? So if I think of my table, the first index is going to hold, that's my, that's my table that holds uh, two, seats two. Then I've got the table that seats four. Then I have the table that seats six. And then finally, I have um, at index uh, three, I'm going to have the table that's eight. So every, groups of size one and two need to go to index zero. Um, and I'll just go ahead and make this comment. So if if the group is size one or two, I want to go. I want to push those to index. Um, I'll just say index uh, zero. If I have a group of size three or four, they're going to go to um, index one, right? So they're going to the table of size four, um, and so on. And so if if what that means is is what like how, how how what does that look like well uh, what we're told is that in our algorithm what we want to do is take the the group size minus one okay we'll think about what that looks like and divide it by two and so we're saying we're taking the, whatever the group size is and we're going to move it to um, the index group size minus one divided by two. And what that does is if, if you start at one or two, um, so one's going to go to one minus one or zero divided by two, that's index zero. Two is going to go to two minus one, one divided by two, which also gives us zero. And that's because Java does um, integer division. It's like taking the floor after typical <laughs> division that you're used to on a calculator, right? So integer division in Java returns an integer. It's, it gives you the integer portion of the answer you get on a calculator and then just takes away everything after the decimal. Um, and so, so that's where this comes from. So well, I'm happy to show the algorithm. I think it's important to think about like where, why does that exist? Um, and so uh, we can create an index uh, variable and it's going to be exactly exactly that uh, group minus group size minus one divided by two. Okay, and what that means is then what we want to do is update. Now we've got we now know where we should store it in the array, and so we're going to say tables um, at that specific index. We're just going to add um, add one to it. I mean. We can also just we can also say plus plus. <laughs> Lots of ways to accomplish the same same task. Okay, so uh, so that is all we want to do within that that loop. And uh, and now we've updated. We've gone through all of the input. We've updated the tables. And now what we need to do is output. So that's um, that's that first piece. Um, and here's our output. For our output, all we have to do is, is loop through um, our array. Um, so we're going to go from index i equals 0 to i less than 4, i plus plus. And what we want to do, it gives me a lot of space to do that, um, is, um, is go ahead and uh, output. So we're going to go uh, system.out.println. Um, and we're going to output, first of all, the size, and, and that can be a calculation. So int um, table size is what I mean by size. Um, and that is based on the index. So the index is going to be, um, if we're at 
zero, it's gonna be everything plus one times two, right? So index um, zero is representing table of size two, so we need two times uh, one or two times i plus one, uh, which we were given also in that algorithm. Plus one, okay. And then what we're gonna, so that gives us the table size and, and you can, um, oops, uh, you can play with that and, and think about what that means. That means zero is it, that will bring it to um, two times zero plus one, right? Um, equals two. And if you go further, one is going to go to um, two times uh, one plus one, which is four, etc. Okay. So that's where that table size takes us. And so what we want to output then is our table size Oops. Um, concatenate with that a col the colon, a space, as we were told, and then whatever is held there. So that's that tables and we want index i. So we're going to loop through that and um, and check it. Oops. So I have an error. Oh, I must be missing a semicolon somewhere. Uh, oh, here. So we will run it. <laughs> and, and there we go. Okay, so what I want to do then is move on to problem two, but we know that oftentimes it starts, the basis of it is the code from problem one. So I'm just gonna copy that in, that's allowed, and then we'll tackle problem two. Okay, so if we look at problem two, um, it says we now wanna look at um, which of these tables is the most popular. So we're going to modify our solution to problem one, I already copied that over, to output only the most popular tables. All right, so the input is the same and we can decide then how we go about doing this. So maybe um, uh, we might have to go through it a few times and decide, um, actually, I'm trying to think what I would want to do. So, so what we'll have to figure out is which is the largest of those, and and we can either create a loop to do that. Or we can keep track of the max as we're we're going through. Um, I think what we'll do, um, just for simplicity, the easiest thing is like leave the input the same for right now, um, and uh, and then what I want to do is. Um, I'll have an extra step here is find most popular table size, and then we'll do the output. Okay, and so table size. Okay, and so what, what we can do with that is just do a quick loop. So int i equals zero, i less than four. There's a more efficient way, but if I were writing a practicum, this is probably the just quick, dirty solution that I would have taken. So I would say, okay, well, I just need to figure out which table size is the most popular. And, uh, and so um, the way that I, or yeah, the way that I would do that is find like which, um, the largest of those elements in, um, in the table. So to find the largest element, we'll loop through all of them and, um, and we'll keep track of that. So int um, most at table, <laughs> uh, max at table, <laughs> max at table, we'll say we'll start off with zero and then we'll work up from there. <laughs> there. Um, so we'll say, um, if um, tables uh, at index i 
is greater than whatever the current max um, number of tables used. It's not max at tables. Max, it's max tables used. So I got to remember what my variables are holding here. Max tables used. Um, then, so if we find a table that's been used more than zero times, we're going to say, okay, well, that's that's the new max tables used. Um, we'll set that equal to it. And then if if now we say, okay, the first um, the first uh, two t two tops the tables that hold two people, um, there were we used one of them. The first time through, we'll say, okay, well, the max tables used is one. But then, say we have four people, four um, at the at the four tops, the tables that seat four people. If we use two of those, um, then that's we've used more um, four person tables than we have one person tables, and so that the max tables used is is this. So I'm just gonna grab that number. I'm gonna loop through and just find the largest um, number of tables used. And there might be more than one of them, but I'm not keeping track of which. Um, and then the second time when I'm going through the output, I'm just going to go ahead and say, um, uh, I'm gonna create an if statement here. So if, um, if tables of index i is, uh, is equal to max tables used, then I'm going to output, otherwise I'm not. Okay, so all of this is going to come in one. I'm gonna tab it in and, and I'm not gonna, I don't have to change then anything. I'm only outputting um, the tables that are holding on a, um, the largest number of, of the, the most popular tables, the tables that were used most frequently. And um, we'll see. Uh, oh, so it passed. So I'm going to just put something um, in, in here and just, just so we can see, it's gonna then yell at me. Um, and that's okay. Uh, most popular tables held this many groups. Plus, um, max tables used. Okay, so I just want to have some output so that this fails and we can see a little bit about <laughs> what happened. Um, so what you can see is we're going to fail everything now because I've, I've added some output, but most popular tables held this many, um, held this many, <laughs> I'm just going to say it like that so that we can actually see it. There we go. And, and so it's held two. Um, and so the four and the six were those that hold two, and you can kind of see um, that the other ones shouldn't have. So in this example of input, um, the tables that see two peop up to two people, there was only one of those used, and so they're not a part of our list. And the eight-person tables um, was only used once with this, we can see this group of size seven. And so again, if in the first problem, it would have been two colon one, four colon two, six colon two, eight colon one. Um, and we only wanna output this time that um, uh, the four person and six person table. So I'm gonna get rid of this. Um, that was just, there we go, we'll pass the test and then we'll move on to problem three. Okay, so moving to problem three, I'm gonna copy this solution because we know it's going to build upon it and we'll see what it asks us. So this time it says, um, instead of seeing the most popular tables, we would like to see all the tables but ordered from least popular to most popular, modify your solution um, to output the tables in order of popularity. Okay, well, we've got the max group size or the max number of tables used. And we know the minimum could start at zero. Um, it says, what do we deal with in terms of if there's a tie, your program must keep track of the number of each type of table that was used. 
um, order of tables from least to most popular, ties are broken by the table size. Smaller tables precede larger tables, which is great because that's in the order that's given. Um, okay, so um, I can change very little about this to, to um, move forward. So I still want to, I want to keep everything here the same, except instead of max tables used, I am going to um, be looking at a certain group size or, or a certain um, number of uses. So I'm going to just up here create um, another loop and that is for um, uh, int uh, used equals zero, I'll call it use. And uh, so I'm creating a variable that I'm going to loop through that's the number of times used. If it was used zero times, I'm going to go all the way from that to used up to um, and including the max tables used. Um, so I want to loop through the, the possible number of ways that a table could be used. And then I want to basically do the same thing I did before. So I'm going to cut that and move it in, into here. And I'll see that I can, I think I can use exactly that, except uh, what I want to do is if, if it's equal to the, the, the loop that we're currently on, then we're going to output it. And I think that's all I have to change. Um, but we'll run it and see, see um, first of all, if I missed a bracket or a semicolon, but also, there we go, we passed. Um, so the nice piece about this is finding what you need to change it. Uh, we're generally trying to build upon a problem and we're not necessarily asking for a lot of code. We're just asking uh, for you to be thoughtful about how it's, how it's utilized. And that's that. Practice practicum one.